Welcome to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press. G.D. Johnson joins the conversation. Uh, it's good to have you join us, G.D. Johnson. It's a beautiful Friday morning. Good morning, Messi. And Justin, good morning. And good, good morning, morning to you, uh, We take a look at the... All over the world. An happy new month. Oh, yes, that's true. First yes. of April. How come I've not pulled an <laughs> April Fool stuff for you? So we didn't pull, we didn't pull on the <laughs> April Fool stunt. It's fine. Um, we take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning and uh, looking at the banner caption, it talks about 2023 presidency. Nadin PDP aspirant intensify plan to produce next president. And that's what you find there. Boldly written. Tambuwa Bala Saraki Dane take consensus campaign to IBB in MENA. Nigeria's unity and progress, more important, says uh, as military president, uh, that's the Ibrahim Babangida. Away from the banner caption, alleged $9.8 million fraud caught freezes ex NMPC GMD Yakubu's account. And you also find reps adjourned plenary over incessant killings. It's also an writer you find this morning. President Mohamed Buhari backs Africa Road Builders Award for Infrastructure. Interesting, just as you have a lot of people complaining about a lot of trunk air roads across the country. And even, you know, Nigeria really not necessarily having a very smooth uh, road network. Troops killed 34 terrorists, 45 others die in Boko Haram ESWAP clash. Uh, this is what also you find there. We cannot complete Ajakuta plans before leaving in 2023. Federal government is quoted to say we cannot complete the Ajakuta plan before leaving in 2023. Uh, the federal government is saying and blames failure on Russia-Ukraine crisis. Uh, that's, that's something very interesting. Well, this is these are some of the headlines this morning on the leadership newspaper. All right, away from the leadership, we'll move on next to the Nigerian Tribune. The lead story is just uh, in the put um, cut lunch. Uh, Integrity reps talk tough. That's uh, the lead story on the Nigerian Tribune. The other stories, uh, let's just see if we can take some of them, uh, just by the left column there. And Ogun Court killings now, Buhari direct security agencies. Then consensus arrangement, Saraki Tambual, Bala meet with IBB. Patronage drops on Lagos Ibadan train route. Court frees ex NNPC GMD Andrew Yakubu of uh, $9.8 million fraud charge. Other stories, Lekito Plaza, Lagos government LCC, engage stakeholders, seek understanding. Above the masthead on the Nigerian Tribune, EFCC arrests 80 suspected internet fraud stars in Ibadan, 40 in Enugu. Bandits invade housing estate in Kaduna, kidnap customs officer, son for others. Uh, well, there's a rider there. Let me see if I can take that. Traditional ruler, three others kidnapped in Abuja. Pastor, son, five others abducted in Kogi State. Insecurity everywhere. Then uh, just uh, before we leave uh, the Nigerian Tribune, just at the bottom right side of um, the, the, uh, the front page, Ramadan, search for moon today, Sultan tells Muslims. Those are the stories uh, you can find on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune this Friday morning. Well, uh, we take a look at the Punch newspaper. Uh, looking at the front page of the Punch, you have a Kaduna reign of terror. Terrorists kill seven soldiers. NAF rains bombs on forest. As boldly written, a military gets approval to deploy Super Tucano. DSS please comb forest. National Assembly threatens shutdown. APC lawmakers demand NAS sacking. Leaked memos reveal why FEC rejected Amici's 3.7 billion naira security uh, proposal. Of course, uh, following the request that we need to have uh, 
CCTV uh, and all CCTVs that gadgets, yeah. and security gadgets and equipment along. But a lot of people had queried why we didn't have that at the you know Before construction level. Yes. Uh, why didn't we factor that into the plan? And some person said, don't forget that you know the the railway uh, you know project has been completed by this government. It was something that was started. But is there no room to you know adjust and yes, amend the entire process? It mm -hmm. just you know constantly push us to look at a second a certain narrative, and then we don't want to be responsible for all that's going on. But we move away from that now. Another says, or your gets the NAF base, Mackinday boost construction with 500 million naira. Ramadan, look out for new moon. Friday, the NSCIA tells Muslims. And you also find Neen Sim linkage, federal government threatens enforcement as deadline expires. Now, just before we move away from uh, the Punch newspaper, Cash trap states grown, widen tax net, and begins aggressive revenue generation. And usually, a country that is not very, very, you know, viable with, or a government that's not very viable with revenue generation, tax would always be it. So when you begin to go down, I mean, it's just normal, simple economics. That the other way out of the window or the struggle would be that, uh, you know, the people would be heavily taxed, and that tax, and that's what's going on. Federal government to spend 2.3 trillion naira presidential fund on Lagos about an expressway and three orders. These are the headlines on the Punch newspaper this morning. The last paper we are reviewing this morning is the Nation newspaper. The main story fears mount over 136 people on attacked Abuja Kaduna train. With some writers there, they can't be contacted, says NRC. Terrorists phone five hostages' families. Angry reps pass vote of no confidence in security chiefs. Police defuse IED at train station. Panic in FCT, Abuja, uh, Kaduna, Abuja Road. More stories on the nation newspaper just below the masthead there. How 223 billion Naira US consulate in Lagos will lift Nigerians. Okay, they, uh, data call rates to go up. I think that's um, the fallout of um, the Outen meeting as the Association of Licensed Telecom Operators uh, in Nigeria. They had a briefing yesterday and uh, we were told about um, the shutdown of their, you know, their, some of their stations in Kogi State and how it would affect some uh, neighboring state, about nine of them. Also, they, they talked about them, how the price of um, diesel you know, has gone up to about over 700 and it is actually affecting operations. Uh, so all of that you can find on the Nation News paper. Oyetola uh, upgrades College of Education Elisha to university. Ex-NNPC GMD Yakubu cleared of laundering $9.8 million. Wow, 300 days rainfall to pound Lagos this year. Messi, Lagosian, brace up. Gunmen abduct customs official, nine others in Kaduna State. These are the stories. Uh, let's just leave uh, uh, it had that uh, so we can bring in um, G.D. Johnson to analyze some of the issues on the front pages. G.D. Johnson, it's good to have you join us once again this beautiful Friday morning. It's the very first day in the month of April and we say Happy New Month to you. Thank you very much. And, um, it's a pleasure to be with you. Too. Just uh, and all so, there we go. Um, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper this morning. We start with the Punch. It talks about terror, uh, terrorists killed seven soldiers and the NAF rains bombs on the forest. So there's been uh, this attack uh, shortly after this incident. Uh, you also have uh, saying that the military has finally gotten approval to deploy the Super uh, Tucano. Uh, that's the jet and the DSS and police. So it, it feels like there's, there's some sort of efforts and we're hoping to see that maybe, you know, these killings and attacks would actually reduce. We are short on memory in Nigeria. <clears throat> we are short on memory in Nigeria. You recall when there was this attack last year, and then there was grandstanding, and that um, some super cop and super... Uh, even like, I recall that the Inspector General of Police and some top military brass visited that act when there was... Um, this terrorist attack along Kaduna Abuja, it was on the road then, it was vehicles that were, that, that, it disrupted vehicular movement. And we know this accident, we have said 
said it over time. If anything should could affect Kaduna and could affect Abuja, the whole of Nigeria is not safe. And that's the reality, and we've been paying the service to it, particularly from government, living in self-denial, from government circle. All the critical infrastructure of our security architecture are based in Kaduna. And Abuja is our capital, where you have your political architecture, your, the, the, the centerpiece of, of, your poli of your public administration. Yet, those two could, that, those corridors are not safe. And you are not seeing President Direct. I'm sure if you do a content analysis of our programs in the last, in the last one year, and if you do a content analysis of this paper report, I, do, I can't recall the, the number of directives the President has given with respect to security agencies doing their job. Once you have appointed Excuse me, please. Sorry. Once you have appointed head of security agencies, they are required to do their job. They don't need further directive from the president to do their job. It's like your producer giving you directive or your MD giving you directive to come to studio today to, to, to present these programs or for the producers to work on this program. So it's the religion of duty. In, in civilized crime, what has happened will have even made the president to resign or will have even made some people to willingly resign from the office because they are failed to do what they are elected to do and they are failed to do what they have been appointed to do. So deployment, do we need to tell the Air Force to to come or the DSS to come that corridor? I, I just can't understand. I just can't understand where you have a systemic failure and people live with it. And then some will come and give us flimsy excuses, ridiculous excuses, no sitting and insulting excuses about though we have asked these people to do this, to do that, to do that. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that you have a situation whereby more than 300 Nigerians could not be accounted for. Even the Nigerian Railway Corporation in this age and time does not have the manifest of the people that enter the, the rail system, despite the investment, the huge investment that was made into this. And despite this present administration using this rail system as one of the cardinal achievements they have done. When you talk about the achievement, oh, they have not done it. They said, oh, go and look at the infrastructure we have built. Look at the railway. Look at this. Look at that. It's, un it's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate that we'll lose seven soldiers and then we'll lose many Nigerians before the Air Force will think of what to do and the DSS will think of what to do. Well, but the, we, we found out that they are already in the forest and they are comb, you know, combing the forest and uh, they have actually made you some You remember, forest. Messi, you remember somebody, some people combed the forest before. That same forest just combed before. Why are they combing it again? They should be addressed it and not use comb. All right, uh, Jude Johnson, let's uh, move on. Although all, almost all the papers are carried uh, in security as uh, their main um, headline, yeah. you know? Just like, Justin, just like you have, that is the eyes of rep. I recall a program we have, and we are talking about insecurity here on Friday morning. Where I said that I challenge the Senate president that is from Yobe State to travel from Abuja to Yobe State without the felony of office, whether he could, he could travel. And we are challenging the speaker. I said the speaker is from my state. I'm from Lagos State. That I require the speaker of as of rep to travel from Abuja down to Lagos. And I asked, when was the last time they traveled by road from any member of the as of rep from Abuja to their various federal constituency? How many? So all this one they are doing is just grandstanding. Grandstanding for the moment playing to the gallery, playing the off-street for the moment. And once another story comes up, and this issue is gone, they continue with business as, as, as usual. They cancel plenary because uh, of what happened. Justin. All right. Uh, I don't want to... <laughs> you, 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 you really seem very unpleased uh, this morning with you know, some of the stories on the head. No, so, you see, because the, the, because the life of a Nigerian... It's what the life of every Nigerian. And it seems as if the people we have elected and the people they have appointed don't care much about us. That's the reality. Now, you see, you see the way we deploy. Now, the security that should be meant for every Nigerian 
you deploy it for few Nigerians that are elected, that are meant to... Now, if the president is coming... To, look at the security apparatus architecture around the president. Look at the one around the House of Rep. Look at the one around the governors. Look at the ones around well-meaning Nigerians. Now, you deploy security. You see the way state resources are being used to protect the few that are elected by the majority, while the majority is left at the mercy of the few that feed from the state. And then when this happens, they start grandstanding. It's, it's irritating and it's annoying. All right, Gideon Johnson, let's also um, look at the leadership newspaper. My question is, what do you make of the excuse that the federal government is giving? Because it's more of, more of an excuse here, saying we cannot complete the Jakuta plant before leaving in 2023. And that's because of uh, uh, the Russian-Ukraine crisis. No, it start, the Russian-Ukraine started in 2015, when they came to power. Or it started in 2019 when they had their second term. Russian Ukraine crisis is not even up to four months. Yet they are using that as an excuse. It's unfortunate that um, we have found ourselves in the situation um, which we have found. I don't know the conspiracy. I knew about Ajakuta, Ajakuta, since I was a young boy. Since I was, since I was a kid, not even a young boy, since I was a kid, that we keep talking about Ajakuta tea complex, that if we complete this, if you bring about a turnaround in the Nigerian industrial sector, it will bring about a turnaround in our economy. We don't have to depend on importing steel and other things that we require to to turn around our economy, to change our over dependence on oil and diversify the economy to other critical areas. So any serious government over the years, and it has been a failure of government, and I think we have been in the midst of the conspiracy between the West and the and the East, that's between Russia, then USSR, and the Western world. You recall that when the first attempt was made, Nigeria was working with Russia. In actual sense, we employed Russians to come and build that infrastructure for us then. And then, All right, uh, we seem to be having some audio each uh, there with um, G.D. Johnson. We'll try and reconnect him uh, in just um, a bit. Uh, but when we get him, I would want him to talk about other issues uh, that are trending or uh, making headlines um, this morning. Today is April the 1st, uh, popularly tagged uh, uh, April 4th. Some people are asking who exactly is fooling who, or the lucky uh, toe uh, 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 plaza reopening today. Uh, welcome back, uh, G.D. Johnson. I was just saying about uh, today, <laughs> today is April Fool's Day. Uh, I can hear you loud and clear. All right, fine. So, uh, <laughs> so I want you to talk about um, the Lekki Toll Plaza reopening as Lagos government, LCC, engage stakeholders, seek understanding. It's on the Tribune newspaper. So just react to that. It is what? April the 1st. Justin, Justin, you have gone through that toll. What's the essence of that toll? I'm asking you, what's the essence of that too? What's the essence? That's the question we need to ask. Does this have economic sense? Does this have um, infrastructure? Sense? Why do you put toll on those two? Now, I'm a taxpayer. I pay taxes to government. Government is meant to provide me with critical infrastructure for, that will help me to make more money so as I can pay more taxes. Now, having paid taxes, now... Government has used the taxes they collected for me to construct road, and government is tolling me on that road. I've said this over time, over and over and over again. What's the essence of those two, the Koyi toll and the Leki toll? What's the essence of it? Now, if you, if you are used to that axis, you discover that the removal of collection of toll on that has to free that environment. The traffic we used to experience the traffic has reduced considerably. And then you ask yourself, what is the logic behind that toll? Once you are approaching, once you get to Zuban, by the way, and you're approaching the toll, the, the, the lanes are up to, they are up to 12. And then once you exit from that, and you're approaching Lekki Phase 1 gate, then the, the lane comes back to 2. So you ask yourself, what is the logic? 
who is fooling who? Who is making money? Who are those? Who, who? And then you recall that before Fashola left, Fashola said, because it was said that Lagos State borrowed money to construct that toll. Fashola said that he has completely paid the Lekki Concession Company. So who? And then this government, I don't know who is advising them from a strategic point of view. And then the day they think that they will come up with restoring the toll was April 1st. April full day. They are just making a fool of themselves right. because the people Jude, have Jude, the resolve Jude, to resist. Jude. Uh, let's not stay so much on that because we will uh, actually dive into it uh, much later on the show today. But uh, let's talk about um, other stuff um, that uh, are trending. I, I want you to also react concerning uh, the Ogo, you know, court rivalry that's been on for quite some time right now. And uh, the president, uh, Mohammed Buhari, is directing security agents uh, to, you know, handle it. Now, what are your thoughts concerning what's happening in Ogun State in recent times? It's, so, it's also well, the Tribune newspaper. Yeah, well, you see, the issue of courtism is just not affect you. It affects every, every part of our country. It's just, all you need to do is for you to just go on the street, go to some streets across Lagos, you know, from Agigi, Agigi to Shomolu, Shomolu to Fadei, and Fadei to Bariga, Bariga to Bagada, so Oron Shoki and the rest of it. So you have this call to our body because the media, it becomes much more prominent in Ogun State. But the question I keep asking is, we are, what are the security agencies in the state? What are they doing? And how does the governor justify, um, how does the governor justify the security votes and the local government chairman justify the security votes they collect on monthly basis? And don't also forget that, um, we recall that in Ogun State, Previous government bought 100,000, there was 100,000 AK-47 that was discovered in the Amori of the state government. And you ask yourself this question, are they fighting war in Ogun State? Now, and then don't also divulge this court war. What you have seen in Ogun State will replicate itself in almost all the states in Nigeria. Because the political, is a political tough war. It's, you can, it's rooted in politics. It's, it's rooted in the control of power. Control of power within the community control of power within the state. I will control power come 2023 political power. So beyond what you are seeing on the surface, there are deeper, deeper, deeper roots um, behind this, behind this, behind this um, court war. And then you require agencies of government to do what they're supposed to do. Because it's, it's all directive you have been receiving. Directive to deal with cardinal crisis. Directive to deal with one in the state. You get directive for us to come. I, I require directive next week to come on set for this program. Wajide Johnson, we look at another head. I talked about the president being awarded, uh, he backs the award of Africa Road Builders Award for Infrastructure. Wonderful. Award, uh, is, is, uh, award is in the eyes of those that are giving the award. <laughs> uh, uh, how many people can travel by road in Nigeria? The air travel is a mess. How many people, then the railway came, and they said, and how many people, there's this particular story that says that passenger, there's a drop in people using the railway from Lagos to Ibadan. There's a drop that people have, that there's a drop in the passenger. So how many people use the Cardinal Abuja rail? So those that are giving their, they are just deceiving themselves. They are playing their street. Let them live under illusion. Um, let them live under that under that um, under that illusion. Just like the just like the Western, just like the Nobel Prize peace peace people did by giving Obama an award on on a global award on Nobel Peace Prize. Yet Obama was part and parcel of those that invaded Libya that caused crisis across the globe. So I'm not. It's it's you don't have told people. It's, when they talk about award, I just laugh. There's one award. It's called the um, most valuable player award footballer of the year. There was one in 2002. Ronaldo was Ronaldo, the, the most valuable player of the tournament was the goalkeeper. And that was the only two tournament that Ronaldo Dalima played. And then when they were award the most, the, the, the most valuable player of the year, Ronaldo that was not the most valuable player of the tournament became the most valuable player of the world. Yet he was not the most valuable player of the tournament. And that was the only competition he played in 2002. 
Korea Japan 2002 World Cup, Oliver Kahn was made the MVP of the tournament. And the MVP of the tournament was not the fourth footballer of the year. And the player that was not the MVP. So the award they are giving to Buhari, let them continue with the award. Continue. That's what I'll say. No, but, so but award is anybody can. Um, G.D. Johnson, what is really, why, why don't we have, I mean, if you look at the entire country, uh, you look at the road network, not entirely anything to write home about. Why is it that we have not been able to have a handle of at least the road infrastructure in Nigeria? You know, I traveled to Akure twice this year and I came back and I spent hundreds of thousands with them in my car. Ask an average Nigerian that travel, they would tell you what they spend in maintaining their car. And we have said it, Nigeria, when people conceive the idea of cars, they never imagine there will be roads as terrible as Nigerian roads. They never imagine that there will be roads as terrible as Nigerian roads. So when people are giving themselves an award for road construction, I just ask them, do they use the road? They don't use the road. Now, the president will come to Lagos and he want to go to any other place. He will, he will, he will, he will use chopper to go to those places. And then they will take the advanced vehicle to go and meet him. And we have seen people too parody themselves to the presidential candidate. And they are from the southwest. They are not using they are not using cars to travel throughout the southwest. They are using helicopter. And people are crazy about it. When about it, when someone has not become president, he's using helicopter. When he becomes president, what would he use? So they are not conscious, they are not aware. And I've said it. It is because our political leaders don't make use of this infrastructure. They would rather the speaker will fly from Abuja to Lagos. The Senate president will fly from, from, from Abuja to Yobi, or will fly to wherever he wants to go. So they don't have they, they don't have an understanding, they don't have first hand experience of what an average Nigerian goes through as a result of that. They are disconnected. So there is a disconnection between the reality of an average Nigerian and the reality of Nigeria with those that are willing us. All right, Gideon Johnson, we don't have much time, but uh, let's just finally talk about uh, the NIN uh, SIM uh, linkage uh, on the Punch newspaper. The federal government is threatening enforcement as a deadline expires. Well, the, the, one of the arguments is that they will be able to trace, trace and contact and identify Nigerians and then be able to fight the insecurity. Now, um, since those that have registered, how many have we traced? And then when you trace and you arrest, you call them repentant, repentant, um, repentant Boko Haram. Then government play to the gallery in labeling um, bandits and Boko Haram as terrorists by labeling them as insurgents. And that's what we are seeing. We are seeing that our soldiers are being killed, our citizens are being killed. We have seen situations where barracks have been attacked. We have seen situations where military formations have been attacked. There is nowhere that is safe, and uh, government is threatening those ones that you have arrested, those ones that you have linked. What have we done with it? As far as I'm concerned, in public administration and in democracy, government does not use threat. Government uses persuasion, persuasion, and persuasion, and enforcement of your law. And then once you do that enforcement, you allow your institutions to take its its course, not by you sentiment. They have repented. I have asked, what is the yastic? What do you use to measure so, repentance of somebody? I don't know when it comes to security issues. So let's, uh, I have linked mine. I'm sure majority of the people have linked theirs. I will see what happens to it. Uh, but one thing that I would just want to add to it is that you could see that um, they said the call rates will go up, the data rate will go up, because the price of diesel has gone up. And when that goes when that goes up, what happens to other sector of the economy? We are in for a good time, not for a rough time. God will help Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, G. D. Johnson. Indeed, uh, God uh, bless Nigeria and Nigerians. Ajide Johnson is the chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism. He joined us uh, to talk about um, all of um, the issues on the front page of uh, various um, dailies this morning. We we'll call it off the press, and that's as much as we can take. Once again, thank you so much, uh, JJ. It's a pleasure to be with you, Justin, and Messi. Have a wonderful weekend. Make sure you enjoy yourself. I intend to.
Yeah. All right, uh, that's uh, off the press for uh, this week. Uh, we will take uh, what uh, happened uh, this same day in history and we'll come back and we'll have our first conversation of the day on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Do join us again.